For me, it's because it's home, so it's nicer always. But uh, we shot Mean Streets for, I think it was either, I think two weeks in New York and three in L.A. or the other way. Three weeks in New York and two in L.A. But the things that we did in L.A. were interiors and stuff that you could get away. Some exteriors, the last part of the movie is in downtown L.A. But, um, you know, it, it, that's what happens. It, it always boils down to money. And it was cheaper to do it, uh, be able to shoot the rest. That part of it, as long as it can be done believably, and that's done all the time in movies. Um, uh, you know, so. Yeah. Are there any aspects of shooting here or working here um, that you would want to change? You know, if you could, if you could change anything about just, you know, working in the city, living in the city. Um, we all want. Well, I want to change certain things, but that's too big, and it's only it was only a dream. Uh, at one point, we wanted to do uh, Jane. I, I had an idea about getting the Brooklyn Navy Yard and making it a kind of a cultural place and studios and for people to see how movies are being done and other parts of the city, everything connected to New York and even New York State, but it was, uh, at that time it just became, it wasn't, uh, it just didn't happen. But that, that was my dream. Yeah. Well, there's still time. <laughs> well, still yeah. some real estate over there. <laughs> yeah. Um, so, so I asked you about Mean Streets, but I do want to kind of go back through um, some of your some of your work because I think a lot of people here would, would love to, to get you to kind of reflect a little bit on that, uh, if you would. Um, so one signature role certainly is in Godfather Part Two, um, and I was really struck by an interview that you gave a few years ago to James Lipton, where you talked about um, preparing for the role of Vito Corleone, and you're playing him as a younger man. Um, there's only, I think, three lines in English. Most of it's in Italian. Um, and already you were following a very an Oscar-winning performance by Marlon Brando. You're the only two who have won Oscars to, for playing the same role. So, but I was surprised to hear that you studied his performance very, very closely. Sometimes there's superstition around that. You know, you don't want to necessarily no. study it, but you were really deliberately trying to. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So t talk I mean, a bit about your approach there. Well, what, the, what we did was uh, uh, one of the producers, uh, Gray Fredrickson, and I took an old uh, Sony tape recorder, reel to reel, up to the 38th floor or whatever it is in the, in the Gulf and Western building at that time, which is now the Trump Hotel. But at that time, we. Uh, <laughs> we'll get to that later. Yeah. <laughs> but anyway, it was, uh, it was uh, there, and we just shot all of Brando's scenes or ran the movie and when Brando's scenes came up we just filmed them we just uh, videotaped them and then I would use those and study them over and over again so that was uh, one thing that I, that I did hey, and you must have been kind of a, a fan of his work I mean I'm yeah, yeah, curious no, I, about your relationship to his work long before you ever were in the business but. he Brando James Dean Montgomery Clift one or two other actors. Uh, yeah, those are my favorites. Yeah. Um, and how's your Italian? <laughs> you, so good. You had to really. Well, that was Sicilian, but a little Italian mixed in. But yeah, it was it was okay. I tried my best. <laughs> you spent a few weeks in. Yes, Sicily. I was in Sicily for like three weeks. Or something. And so you talked about some of the actors you admired. Were there any uh, particular films or? plays or novels, works of art. You grew up in an artistic household, obviously. But were there works that inspired you that you can kind of go back and say, aha, you know, when I was X years old, I saw that film? Well, when I was a kid, I'd see the movies that, that kids at that age, most kids see, see in the Lowy's Theater or the, you know, the, the double bill of um, uh, Ben-Hur. Sunday last summer was one that was a little more artistic. Tennessee Williams, but, uh, what um, Elizabeth Taylor? I, no, was she in it? Uh, no, that was uh, Anna Magnani, I think. And uh, I forget who. Maybe I'm mixing them up. But it was a um, more big mainstream type films that we I would see. Mm. Or The Searchers, uh, John Wayne, uh, uh, the. Uh, Anyway, those kind of films.
films that uh, I, I, were that influenced me or made an impression on me. Yeah, I'm curious about comedy because comedy. Uh, when I told my 11 year old son I was doing this conversation, he said, "Oh yeah, the guy from Meet the Parents." You know? <laughs> so there's a whole generation. I know, I'm working on him, don't worry. But uh, there is an entire um, phase of your career that you've flourished in comedy. Um, and, I'm, and you've had roles over the years that have had elements of, you know, Rupert Pupkin. You know, there are, that's a very dark comedy. But there's, you know, you clearly uh, are approaching comedy from a place where you can kind of put it over. But I'm just curious your experience of actually doing it. What, why? Why has it been a... a, a well, with the... Um, I mean, the comedy stuff on a more mainstream way, because I did stuff that was comedy, I guess you could call it in some ways, the, the Brian De Palma films in the mid-60s. Uh, but uh, Billy Crystal had uh, this idea about... Uh, this, uh, um, analyze this, and then sent me, had the script sent to me, and I, and I read, I said, this is kind of interesting, it'd be fun to kind of make fun of all that stuff, and, and uh, so that's how that started. Uh, and then after that, I met Jay Roach, and we did the uh, Meet the Parents, uh, those three films. That's, but it, it, yeah. it really is something that you've embraced with Saturday Night Live, and so... I like comedy, I love comedians, I think that they, they're, they're great, uh, and and I, I get a big kick out. I love Saturday Night Live. And yeah. I always, when I look at a movie, I always say, I wonder how they're going to do this on Saturday Night Live. <laughs> and uh, they're great. And, and I mean, do you see it as like the yin and the yang? I mean, the, the dramatic roles, you kind of, you have to have the, the commitment. The commitment is there. Well, there's also uh, funny situations or ironic situations. That, uh, that um, come out of real uh, interactions with people. Uh, I like that too, where real characters get into funny situations, but they're real. Yeah.